to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 347, Mayberry Days 2015 Special Report, Part 2. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weavers. Go over to Weavers and check it out, weaversdepartmentstore.com. They've got the Andy Griffith Show 2016 wall calendar. You definitely want to get that so you'll know what day it is. They also got some great stuff like Mayberry Postmarks. You can get 10 different note cards and envelopes by artist Mike Johnson and the property of Mayberry Union High Athletic Department sweatshirt, just to name a few things. Head over to Weavers and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you, the executive producer of Two Chairs No Waiting. Episode number 347 is Tim Bradshaw. Mr. McBeavy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I appreciate your support, and I want to thank you for being here in the show tonight. Uh, my name is Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, and I hope you're going to enjoy this. Last week, we had a great report from Kevin Burke, who stayed at the Andy Griffith Home Place and had a great time there. He had fun, and uh, it, that was a very well-received podcast, and I want to thank Kevin, who does Burke on Mayberry podcast about the Andy Griffith Show, the first, by the way podcast about the Andy Griffith show uh that he was the one that did it not me you know so I asked him about uh you know think I ought to start a podcast or something and he's like yeah I think you might enjoy it. it's a lot of work and boy was he right but it's been a lot of fun and folks I also want to thank our patrons now if you don't know that you can support two chairs no waiting on patreon now in the last week or two since Mayberry days we've actually had some more people actually are supporting me on patreon they're actually donating uh, dollars to me uh, when I produce a show. Now, this is not something I'd expect of anybody, but if you would like to help support Two Chairs No Waiting, you can do so by going to patreon.com. You go to the Two Chairs No Waiting website, scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see a thing, become a patron. And when you do, it'll take you right to the Patreon website, and you can decide that you want to donate a dollar, or fifty cents, or two dollars, whatever you want to donate. And I want to thank uh, our current patrons. There's only six, so this won't take too long. Larry Taylor is our latest patron. I want to thank him. He just did that today. Larry Granger, also recent, and I really want to thank Larry. He's one of our. Uh, I don't know what I should call him. Executive patrons. I don't know. <laughs> he's donating. A, he's donating. A, uh, He's doing a nice donation. I want to thank him for that. Court Howell, I've mentioned him before. He is a patron of the show as well. Also doing great. great. All these folks are just so I'm thankful for them. We've got Leslie Lowell, Rebecca Spears, and Paul Mulek. I want to thank all six of the patrons because I'm getting like $12 an episode right now for doing the show. Wow. That, all, that covers, does that cover my hosting fee? I think it does. Yes, milestone one has been reached. Thank you, patrons. I want to thank you for that because it's, uh, I think, $11 an episode it cost me to do the show. And now I'm getting 12. So, you know, now I've only got the other 340 episodes that I've already paid for to make back. <laughs> now, hey, folks, I do want to thank you again. I want to thank you for all your support here on the show and for the podcast. I hate to go into it at the beginning, but I know some of you, uh, you know, y'all, 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 y'all blessed me, and I really do appreciate it. And I wanted to make sure you knew that. So thank you. All right. So we're going to head on and talk about Mayberry Days. Now, last week I tried to do this, and uh, we had some technical difficulties during the production of the show. So let me get back to it this week because we changed it over and ran Kevin's show, uh, article or his story last week so that uh, I could get around some of the technical problems. So this week I'm going to try to give you my report about Mayberry Day. So let me get a little bit of background music. Thank you to the VW boys who provided our background music here. So what happened was I headed up to Mayberry Days with my lovely wife Jan and we got up there on Wednesday night. Now Mayberry Days is the last full weekend of September every year. So it's always great to get up there and we stay at the Mayberry Motor Inn and we, we were there and uh, got to see Alma, the owner, and her grandsons. They were all there. And it was great uh, Wednesday night. But then Thursday morning, we got up pretty, well, not too early. We got up and headed downtown to uh, Main Street. And when I hopped out of the car, who was the first person I saw? Gomer Pyle. There he was. So it was. Uh, I was dressed as Floyd uh, the Barber already. You may not know that about me. Uh, but I was dressed up as my Floyd character. 
and out I popped out of the car and there was Gomer Pyle and uh, I think he was doing a citizen's arrest on us for our parking incorrectly but we headed over to Mayberry on Main if you're ever in Mount Airy you definitely want to drop by over there to meet Andy Griffith's daughter uh, Dixie so she was there I got my picture made with her cutting her hair and stuff she's very nice she was signing autographs and raising money for charity it was a lot of fun so not much time to do uh, just uh, visiting downtown because I had to head over to the Cross Creek Country Club where they're going to have the Mayberry Days Golf Tournament. Now, who all was there? We had George Lindsay Jr. there, uh, Bruce Billison, Karen Knotts, uh, Ronnie Shell, uh, Margaret Carey, uh, Maggie Peterson, uh, had uh, James' best wife Dorothy was there, and Betty Lynn. They were all there to help the golfers kick off the Mayberry Days Golf Tournament. And it's always a lot of fun. You, you have about 100 golfers there. And some of the tribute artists are, guests, are dressed up. And, they, you know, Floyd and Gomer was there and Barney and some others. And we're helping the golfers get ready to go and play a round of golf there for Mayberry Days. And the cast members show up out on the porch of the, the back porch of the uh, golf pro shop and visit just a little bit with each uh, each one of them get up and actually speak and, and say a few words about uh, to the golfers and Maggie Peterson Charlene her famous one uh, oh I think I may have skipped somebody Bruce Brillison the assistant director of the Andy Griffith show he was there as well but Maggie Peterson she always gets up and gives them the uh, the advice uh, keep your head down and follow through and uh, you know that's Every year, she's pretty much done that. Now, George Lindsay pulled a fun one. Uh, when he was actually getting up to speak, uh, you know, he's up on the stage, and people are taking pictures of him up on the porch there. And he got up there and took a picture of the crowd. <laughs> so that was fun. Of course, David Browning is always there as the Mayberry deputy, the master of ceremonies for the kickoff of the golf tournament. Uh, so that's always a lot of fun. And the cast members, are not cast members, but the uh, tribute artist. We go out to the golf course, and usually, lately, we've been going to one hole and standing there. And when all these different golf teams come through, we stop and visit with them and get a picture made uh, there on one of the golf holes. Uh, We used to ride around all the time doing that, but then we kept missing people. But it was a beautiful day. The uh, geese were out, uh, and we were able to visit with golfers all day long and have our picture made. Then following that, on Thursday night, is the uh, golf extravaganza, I guess is what they call it, where they actually have uh, the golf golfers and the cast members from the Andy Griffith Show are there, and they have dinner. And this is a great event if you'd like to get a chance to actually meet the cast members and get autographs and stuff like that. This is a great time to do it because it's not very crowded. Uh, you can you can always get back there to see them and get your picture made with them. Now, I will say that uh, we had the pleasure because Barney and Floyd were hosting this event, and Otis, he always plays golf, and he actually won a prize for the longest drive during the golf, golf outing. Now, if you knew Otis and how he plays golf, this would be a big surprise to you, just like it was to me. <laughs> But everybody gets lucky every once in a while. So, Kenneth Junkin, congratulations on winning that. We had a great participation with the golfers. They were there. They get their golf awards and prizes. And uh, we give away first, second, and third prize for golfing. And then we also give away the Barney Fife Esquire Club Award, which is a bullet-mounted uh, trophy uh, to the team who had the highest score. Now, if you might... Remember, the high score in golf is not a good thing. <laughs> so that's always uh, that's always a fun trophy to hand out. Now, this is all on Thursday night, folks. We haven't even started Mayberry Days proper yet. And we're not even through telling you about Thursday night. Now, on Thursday night, all the cast members get up and speak. And this year, we had a special guest there. His name was John Floyd, a comedian. And he got the show rolling because he was funny, had a great time. And then Bruce Billison got up and spoke and just uh, mentioned that he would be speaking later in the weekend. And we had Betty Lynn, Thelma Lou, she was there. Now, Bruce Billison, I'll remind you, was the assistant director, the AD, 
for the Andy Griffith Show there in the first couple of seasons. Had great stories to tell, and we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, Betty Lynn was there. She spoke to everybody. Uh, the, all the cast members that were had made it into town already were there. Rodney Dillard, he made it to the evening sh- there, uh, signing autographs, sang a song for us. And uh, Rodney Dillard is the guitar playing banjo, uh, guitar playing darling boy, not banjo playing. That was Doug, uh, and he sang a song for us. And then we had Margaret Carey, and she played Bess Muggins, and uh, uh, one other character that escapes me her name right this second. I'm sure I'll hear from that from you guys. But uh, she was also the live action model for Tinker Bell, and she only mentions that every few seconds. <laughs> that was her line, not mine. Ronnie Shell, Ronnie Shell, you'll remember him as Duke Slater from Gomer Pile. He's going with us on the Mayberry Cruise coming up next week. So there won't be a podcast next week, so y'all had to hold out. Uh, but he was there uh, and told some stories again as well. And then, uh, first time Mayberry attendee, Mayberry Days attendee, uh, Clint Howard, Leon, he was there. You know, Clint Howard is Ron Howard's little brother. And he proceeded to tell us how he basically didn't remember anything about being on the show because, you know, he was only two years old when he got the role. But Clint has uh, some great memories, and we're going to be sharing a little bit of that. we got about a couple of minutes of that later in the show, so stay tuned. And next up, we had Dorothy Best. She was there. Dorothy was there. She's do- she did a show along with David Browning, the Mayberry deputy, uh, celebrating the life of James Best, and that was uh, that was later in the weekend as well. But she was here for the golf outing, and then Karen Knotts, Don Knotts' daughter, she was present, and George Lindsay Jr. You might guess whose son that, that might be, George Lindsay's. He even got up and gave his goober grin for everybody in the audience, and uh, it was entertaining the crowds uh, for for the whole evening, and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Everybody laughing and having a good time. Maggie Peterson got up and said a few words as well. And then the evening is always wrapped up uh, with Elvis, Michael Hoover, Elvis impersonator or tribute artist. I'm not sure the right word to say there. He got up and sang, and it's always, you know, he is, he is a huge Andy Griffith Show fan. It's how this all got started of Elvis being there with us. And... He is, uh, he's a fun, and then you have the cast members and the tribute artists often get up and dance behind him, and he's out in the crowd, and the women are all loving it. The, uh, the tribute artists, like I said, are having fun, and the stars, they usually get up and do a little bit too, the ones that uh, feel the urge, and then uh, it, it's just a, a great evening for all. Now, folks, that is Thursday. Thursday. We haven't even gotten started yet. So let me get that started. Next up, we're going to talk about uh, Friday. Now, Friday is when it really kicks off at Mayberry Days, and everybody starts gathering together to do the uh, the proclamation downtown. So it was a rainy weekend. Now, it never did rain hard or anything like that, but it was a definite rainy weekend. So folks gathered on the stage of the Blackman Theater, and that's all outside at 9 o'clock on Friday morning. Or maybe it was 9.30. Anyway, early Friday morning. We had the uh, cast members were there. The tribute artists were all around. We had Goober and Otis and Mr. Wheeler. He was there. He's often in our chat room as well. And Gomer, uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Pike, he was there with us. And, uh, of course, David Browning. And even a little boy dressed up like Leon who caught the eye of Clint Howard. He was there as well. Colonel Harvey. Uh, Ernest T. Bass was there, and uh, as I said, it was a, a cold, not cold, but rainy, but not quite raining morning. Barbara Eden came to Mayberry Days this year. It was her first trip, and she was uh, she was at the proclamation as well. So it was a great morning. We had a lot of fun uh, seeing everybody on stage. Uh, they got there. Now, I should have mentioned, uh, too, he... he he was at the golf outing, but he didn't speak or anything, really. His name's Ronnie Sapo, or Dapo, I mean, Dapo, D-A-P-O. He played uh, the spoiled kid. Remember him? Well, he was there at Mayberry Days as well. This is his first trip. So we had Clint Howard, his first trip, Barbara Eden, first trip, and Ronnie Sapo, Dapo. Ah, why do I keep saying Sapo? I'm thinking of Groucho Marx, evidently. Uh, Dapo. 
he was there, the spoiled kid, Arnold Winkler. So he was there. And uh, Miss Eden was very nice and cordial. And I'd never met her before, so that was uh, very nice to get to meet her. And uh, so they had the entire th- uh, morning there, Friday morning, all the cast members getting up and visiting with uh, the, the assembled crowd, which, believe it or not, was a pretty good crowd. And Clint Howard, as I said, saw a little boy dressed like Leon. And from stage, he said, I have got to get my picture made with him so my brother can see this. <laughs> <laughs> so he was glad to have somebody that was dressed up like Leon with him. Uh, so that was uh, that was fun. Uh, Clint Howard was uh, a treasure all weekend. Really enjoyed getting to visit with him. Uh, Barbara Eden uh, was very nice, but she was very busy. Her lines were three hours long getting autographs or giving out autographs. Uh, now Barbara Eden, Clint Howard, and Ronnie Dapo all received keys to the city of Mount Airy. From the mayor, so that was a big deal. And uh, basically, the mayor at the proclamation, he gives uh, the official kickoff to Mayberry Days, and that was his presence. Uh, what he does every year, so or whoever happens to be the mayor. This was the 26th Mayberry Days, so there's been several mayors during that time frame. Uh, but that was a lot of fun, and the crowds, there were huge crowds there, believe it or not, even with the rainy weather. So then folks headed over to line up for Barbara Eden over at the Andy Griffith Museum. She was down at the bottom section of that, and we got to go in. My wife and I went in and got a picture of Floyd cutting Clint Howard's hair, and I got to speak with him a little more there. I'd met him back in 1997, somebody corrected me earlier, uh, in Kannapolis, North Carolina, and so we got our picture made with Clint. And then Floyd got his picture made with the manicurist, Barbara Eden. That was a big thrill. And uh, I want to thank my wife for standing in line to get that. Uh, the funny thing was, you know, she charges uh, for autographs, obviously. And she also charges to get your picture made with her. So I had, I had paid to get my picture made with her, evidently, according to Jan. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I paid. And then uh, as I was getting my picture made, her uh, crew members came around and said, wait, wait, we got to get a picture of this too. And and I was like, hey, this is great. I'm getting my picture made with Barbara Eden. And then later I thought, wait a minute, I had to pay to have my picture made with you. (laughs) Uh, So it was a lot of fun. If you go to the Mayberry Museum, the Andy Griffith Show Museum, Andy Griffith Show, the Andy Griffith Museum, check as you go in the door over toward the uh there's some uh, plants over there look around on the ground because there's somebody has written bobby gribble hates emma larsh <laughs> on the concrete uh in the granite i should say so check that out because there's all kinds of uh plaques and things in the ground you'll want to see one for russell hyatt charles dow betty lynn andy griffith of course emmett forrest don knotts george Lindsay, uh jim clark and james best jeff Coots. My friend even has one there at the Andy Griffith Museum. So check that out. Don't forget to get your picture made over at the Andy Griffith, Andy and Opie statue. You're going to want to do that as well. There's all kinds of things to do if you go to Mayberry Days, I've got to tell you. So later that day on Friday, we had the Mayberry Days trivia contest. And uh, Mayberry's, the Andy Griffith, the Two Chairs No Waiting podcast chat room member, Sarah, she was there and had her picture made. She was actually helping us with uh, the trivia questions. So that was a lot of fun. We had a uh, new winner this year. I won't tell you who that is. We'll, we'll talk about that later because, guys, the trivia questions were unbelievably hard. I mean, I just can't wait to tell you what they were, but I'll have to because I don't even, you know, I don't have a copy right now, and they were so hard. It is unbelievable. And we had our port queen, uh, Kathy. She was our port queen uh, filling in for David Browning's wife, who usually does the port queen for us. Now, that was all Friday morning. Guys, I've I got to get through all this. So let's just head on over to the parade on Saturday because uh, there's so much going on on Friday. We're, I can't complete it all. We're, we're pretty far into this podcast already, and I'm not even close to telling you guys everything that's been going on. So, for, so Saturday morning. Because, I mean, there was stuff that happened on Friday, uh, the Rodney Dillard concert, the James Gregory was there, funniest man in America. 
then the VW Boys, who you're hearing in the background, they did their show Friday night. All oh, wonderful events. Definitely encourage you to go and see all these things because, wow, uh, you will not be disappointed. So next up, let's head over to the uh, parade. So the parade kicks off on Saturday Saturday mornings about 9 o'clock. And you had Betty Lynn in the parade, had uh, several different people dressed as Opie. We had our, <laughs> we actually had the Potato Queen was there, as well as the Pickle Queen, Bruce Billison, as I said. Uh, we got, we had Ernest T. We had some other goobers and gomers in the parade that were not the regular goobers and goners, uh, uh, goober and gomer that are with us. Uh Aunt B was in the parade. The Barney chapter, always a treat. Now, this year, they did their theme for their float was Barney lingo. And they all had signs around their neck like kleptomaniac and therapeutic, compulsion. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. But Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson, who is an artist that was mentioned earlier from Weavers. He's doing the Mayberry Postmarks. He made a suit. And when I saw him from a distance, it was a gray suit. I could tell that. And it had something hanging on it. There were little white patches. It looked kind of like post-it notes, but they were white. And so I started checking and got up closer to him. And you know what they were? Salt and pepper. <laughs> he bought him a suit, and he put salt and pepper packages all over the suit. And I have to tell you guys, it was awesome. Uh, we had uh, all kinds of different characters there, and the, the fans enjoyed seeing all the members of the uh, cast and crew. Uh, Morgan Brittany made it for Saturday morning. She was there. Uh, so she played Opie's, Opie's girlfriend on one episode, if you'll remember that, in the color episode. And we had a new little Opie from over in South Carolina. A great, great job. I had Regis. He's there every year with his sign, down with the gold standard, vote for the single stack uh, tax. He is there. And Mr. Wheeler was walking around. He had he had both his uh, bug spray and some asphalt singles, shingles on his, on his shoulder. So he was ready for work. And I hear Aunt B gave him some uh, lemonade as he was walking down the parade, but I'm not sure. Uh, it had Henry Bennett. Everybody... Winkum, blinkum, anonymous Rex, protect us all from the man with the hex. Folks, if you have not been to Mayberry Days, it is a amazing thing. Seeing these tribute artists walking down the st uh, street. Uh, Colonel Harvey is carrying his Indian elixir. He even had a, uh, <laughs> he even had a, uh, some kind of a bird's feather. You know, I'm sure he got from the uh, Shawnee, because isn't that who he lived among? The Shawnee. Is that right? Anyway, he had... Uh, Several Barneys, uh, of course, David Browning, our primary Barney. Uh, Dennis Bill was there with his, with his cars. Barney was in a sidecar this time, uh, riding around in Checkpoint Chicky out on Highway Six. He even had a he even <laughs> he even had a submachine gun. You know, and he had a shovel and a rake too, I believe, and I'm not sure. But uh, then we had. Uh, uh, folks, the parade is a great fun. Gomer was going through the parade, and you should have seen him. He was Gomer Pyle, dressed in his deputy uniform because he'd been deputized, and he was carrying him a shotgun, and uh, he was wearing his rain slicker because it was kind of rainy, and he was watching for Regis as well. But he kept sticking the gun in his mouth. You know, we kept telling him, Gomer, don't don't put the gun in your mouth. So uh, Gomer is awesome. If you haven't seen him, Michael Oliver, thank you. Uh, we had one of the fun girls was there. Hello, doll. That was Michelle. Michelle dressed up. And believe it or not, this year they actually had a cow with shoes on his feet. Now, that was impressive to me. I don't know how they got uh, shoes on, on that cow's feet, but they were walking around. So that was Abel, Baker, and Charlie. They were in the parade, I guess is what we'd say. <laughs> Uh, and then all the tribute artists, the cast members, they're all there at the Mayberry Days Parade. Uh, again, if you have not been to Mayberry Days, folks, try to start saving money now. Because next year is Mayberry Days again. And, man, we're running long, but I don't want to quit. Uh, Mayberry Days again next year uh, is the last full week of September. You do not want to miss it. And I want to encourage you to try to make it to that event. 
If you can't make it to any other events, make it to that one. And if you can't make it to that one, certainly make it to another one because there is just too much fun. So as the day went along there Saturday, uh, the, tr the tribute artists were down on the street visiting with people. And then Neil Brower, Professor Brower, which we've seen here on the podcast before, and we will be seeing again soon, he did a second session because he had done a session in 2011 with Bruce Billison. Now that session, I'm hopeful we're going to be showing here on the podcast in the re in the near future, and then later we'll show this session that was filmed this year, if it all works out as I hope. Uh, but he had a wonderful session with Bruce Billison where he talked about things like uh, things about production of the show, and he even revealed who Nice Dress Nelly was. Now, I can't tell you who they are because I don't have the notes. But uh, but he was there uh, doing that, and I definitely, you're going to love that. Now, as part of that, we got uh, Clint Howard up on the stage. Now, see, I, I can't go to this event, so my wife goes and tells me all about it. But Clint was there and had some things to say. Now, now I want to thank right away here our friend uh, Tim, who is actually the executive producer of tonight's show, because Tim uh, actually recorded just about two minutes of what Clint Howard had to say during the lecture. And so I wanted to uh, play that for us tonight. What does it mean for you to come to this place this weekend? And that's Neil Brower. And I know you don't remember being on the show. It was a small part, but you're important to us. All the characters are, aren't they? What does it mean? Well, it, what it reminds me is First of all, how good the show was, because people connected with it. I can tell, you guys, this is not a Star Trek convention. <laughs> or this isn't a horror convention. And they didn't do this for the Beverly Hillbillies. They don't do this for the Beverly Hillbillies. There was something special about it. And I can see, when you guys came up and talked to me, when you guys continue to come up and say, hey, I can see by the look in your eye what the show meant. And that reminds me that it's something to really be proud of, and I am. And I'm proud for my brother and my dad and just everybody. And this is, this is something good. This is not pablum, and it's not heavy-handed. It was just really well-constructed, not wholesome, honest entertainment. So I, that's what it reminds me. honored is have Bruce here. Yes. Do you realize? So Neil's talking that about Bruce Billison there. So I, that was uh, that was Tim, and I want to thank Tim for uh, giving me a chance to actually show that here on the podcast uh, or let you hear it because uh, that was a, a great little clip of, of uh, Ron Howard's little brother, uh, Clint, at Neil Brower's event. Now, as I said, I'm hopeful we will have – uh, more information about that in upcoming episodes and uh, even go back and listen to the one we heard uh, when he did the interview back in 2011. So immediately following that, we had the uh, Andy Griffith Show Rio and Watchers Club annual meeting where different members of the, sh of the uh, Rio and Watchers Club get up and give reports about what their chapters have been doing. And, uh, you know, so it's different chapter leaders get up and speak. And we had Dewey... Lamb got up and speak. Mike Johnson from the Barney chapter. Dewey Lambs from the Shakedown Shakedown chapter. And uh, Kenneth Junkin from the Hardy Eating Men and Beautiful Delicate Women. He's our Otis Campbell tribute artist. Uh, one of them. Uh, we have, uh, he's the one we usually work with. And we have Bo that's from, uh, that also dresses up as uh, Briscoe from the Knoxville chapter, the Mayberry chapter in Knoxville, I should say. Uh, so everybody gets up and speaks. Uh, Jeff Branch. Uh, Jeff Branch. Jeff Koontz got up and spoke a little bit as well. Now, I want to tell you that uh, some awards were given out. The Mayberry Friendship Award was given to our our Gomer, uh, Michael Oliver. Uh, that's uh, that's from fr that's from fans of the Andy Griffith Show, just members that give that award away. And then uh, later, we presented the uh, the Jim Schwinky Award to. Uh, a well-deserving member, Jeff Koontz. 
Now, Jeff, if you don't know Jeff, he works tirelessly. He's doing all kinds of stuff to help the Surrey Arts Council. He he works for the Who's Been Messed Up the Bulletin Board Solid Auction that's raised around $50,000 over the years for the Surrey Arts Council and Mayberry Days to help put the event on. And uh, Jeff just shows that spirit of Mayberry to uh, to those around him. And that's why he got the Jim Schwanke Award that's presented yearly uh, since the passing of our friend Jim Schwanke. Uh, so anyway, then the chapter members get together for a picture. All right, folks, we're getting close to finished because the last thing I'm going to tell you about this, this uh, kind of rounding it all out is Colonel Tim's. Now, you never know what's going to happen in Colonel Tim's. I mean, it's, it's, you just never have an idea. But uh, we, we always have a lot of fun at Colonel Tim's every year, uh, and this year was no exception. We had all the uh, tribute artists were there. We had, uh, you know, just all kinds of stuff went on. The, the cast members get out and visit with everybody. We put on a couple of, uh, I guess, their... I don't know, I guess what you, uh, little skits that we do. And as we do these skits, they're, they're reminiscent of the Andy Griffith Show, uh, hopefully. <laughs> I hope people think that they're reminiscent. And we were doing one uh, this time that was the uh, Gomer Pyle, uh, when Gomer comes in to, uh, to be a deputy. And Barney's going to enter. It, it was great fun. Uh, Gomer is uh, so funny during that skit. And then we also did a skit uh, that was kind of made up because these characters were never in it. But we had Goober and Otis and Floyd being deputized by Barney. Now, that never actually really occurred. It was uh, Goober and Otis and I think Asa, I can't remember, that was with them. And, yeah, it was Asa. And then Floyd was with another two people. But we, we rewrote this, the script a little bit, and uh, that, was, that was one of our tributes to the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, the cast members, again, joined us for the event. Uh, we had singers. We had people dancing. We had comedians. Uh, you know, Colonel Harvey got up and did his, uh, you know, he sold his Indian elixir. Who among you? <laughs> you know, he, he's he got that down. Clint Howard came out and spoke to the audience and, again, well-received. George Lindsay sang some songs, had a great time uh, singing songs. We had American, or not American, the Mayberry Idol Winners got out. And then uh, David Browning received an award that's called You're the Cats. And there was a couple that used to come to Mayberry Days named Ron Quincy and his wife, Terry. And David Browning uh, got an award from their chapter and the Andy Griffith Show Radio Notchers Club that's called You're the Cats. Now, this was the second year this award had been presented. And I was lucky enough to be able to present both of these awards. Last year, it went to Tanya Jones. And the Year of the Cats Award is uh, for the thankfulness for uh, what happens at Mayberry Days and all the uh, work that goes into actually doing things to make Mayberry Days special. And uh, the the Quincy's and the Rewind Watchers Club voted last year, of course, for Tanya. And then this year, David Browning. It was his 25th. Mayberry Days as the Mayberry Deputy. And so out of 26, he's only missed one ever. And not only that, but this year he had a grandson on Friday of Mayberry Days, his first grandson, and he stuck it out with all of us at Mayberry Days. And, David, you completely uh, deserve the award. You are the cats, and we want to thank you for all you do. All the tribute artists came out, and even the cast members came out to just thank him and to recognize his contribution to everything that he's done uh, around Mayberry Days. So Tanya Jones, the director of the Surrey Arts Council, and David Browning, the second recipient of this uh, Year of the Cats Award. Uh, so that wasn't it. Uh, the cast members came out, uh, and we had singing from Charlene, Maggie Peterson. We, and then we ended up, as always, with Michael Hoover, Elvis, coming out to sing for us. So... Folks, that is a long report, so if you've stuck this out, I appreciate it. And if you watch the video version, you've actually seen pictures. I've been showing pictures and stuff, so you might want to go back and check that out if you'd like to because, boy, we had all kinds of stuff. We had Opie. We had Otis. We had everybody on the stage at Mayberry Days. We even had Mr. Schwamp that you can see in the background of some of the pictures. Uh, he was there with us uh, as well. And, folks, it is uh, Mayberry Days is a special, special event. I hope you can come sometime. 
So, all right. Well, that's it for this evening, folks. We're going to have to start our way out of here. Wow, a long show. And I hope you guys enjoyed this special report for Mayberry Days Part 2. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. Or you can email me at floyd at at imayberry.com, floyd at imayberry.com, or drop by two chairs no waiting. Dot com and leave a message there. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love for you to be able to tell other fans what you thought about Mayberry Day. So, even if you don't want your comments on the air, go over to this podcast episode show notes. This is episode 347. Leave comments. Tell us about your experience at Mayberry Days. I'd love to read them, and I'm sure other fans would as well. No podcast next week. If you listen to them recorded, you'll never know that. But if you don't, don't be looking for next week. We're on the Mayberry Cruise. So until next time, folks, have a great Mayberry week.